Okay, so uh, we're going to move on to something a little more fun. Uh, for this set, I'm going to assume you don't know much. So if you know about indicators and you know how all this stuff works, just stop. Okay, click, click stop. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to assume that you don't know much and we're going to describe what these indicators are and how to set them in Profit Trailer and how they're modified and how to use them to set your own strategies by looking at charts. Okay, and there's a few, but we're just gonna we're just gonna start with the basics and, and kind of go from there. So, we'll start with Bollinger bands. Um, Bollinger bands are used to uh, uh, map a price envelope. So, and really to 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 show you visually volatility. So you'll you'll as a price spikes or dumps, the bands go like this, and it's telling you, okay, well, this is kind of where you could be, you know, in this trend, this this volatility band. And some people like to trade on those because it's telling you kind of what's happening with, with the pair. Um, they're a little bit of a lagging indicator, but they, you know, they, don't, they, they do, do pretty well. So let's take a look at how they look and how they're set up. In This is TradingView. I, I like to use TradingView. I'm not nearly an expert on it. In fact, I've been wanting to get more into the, into the Pine stuff, uh, the scripting. Um, Crypto Gnomes crew, I talked to them for a little bit the other day and uh, they've been doing some pretty cool stuff with, with scripting on the bottom to, to look for, um, look for, for patterns and, and how to set settings. Um, I kind of just look at it and, and play. You know, I, sh I should probably learn more. <laughs> I just haven't had time. Um, but anyway, pretty cool. Uh, Coinigy is another popular one, uh, but uh, I think in one of my other videos, I was being laughed at because I was using a calculator. I have learned how to use the shift button. Thank you, YouTube. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, you can't know everything, uh, but you can always keep learning, right? So, Bollinger Bands. Here they are. They're defined by this blue line. The red line is called an SMA. That's a, a smoothed move, moving average, and the Bollinger Bands are, are in reference to that. Um, to set these up on a chart, you would go to Indicators, and you can pick Bollinger Bands, and then it would show up down here with the, with the defaults. Uh, you're going to want to change these defaults to match the settings that are that are put into Profit Trailer. You do that by clicking here, and you've got your inputs. So how how, you know, how long is the SMA? How many candles is it looking at? Is essentially what's it's, what it's asking you. Uh, standard deviations. I believe it's just two. There's no there's no um, code for that in Profit Trailer, so it's probably two. Um, and and how many candles? And then you know you can make it fatter or whatever. You know. So uh, let's look at a config. So this in Profit Trailer, uh, geez, I need to just call it feeder. This in feeder is what gets written on every market condition. This is also essentially the same file that's going to be um, in just regular old Profit Trailer. So here's where we're going to define what parameters to use for the strategy we're using to, to buy or sell or both. So there's a period. Now, the period means the essentially the candle size so it's in seconds so if you put 900 here 900 seconds is 15 minutes so we're looking at 15 minute candles for our calculations that means when you're doing this this number up here is the candle size and every candle contains that many prices uh, and it's shown you on here so you've got your wicks and you've got your your your, uh, your open and your close price and, and this is another a visual representation of what's been going on with the coin. So, so you want to come up here and you want to make sure that's 15 minutes so that it matches. The second parameter is this 20. So we had um, 40 in here. So we have a 40 SMA with 15 minute candles. So it's really important that you match that on your chart. So we'll come over here and we'll make sure that is 40. Okay. There you go. Now you see what the bot sees. Pretty close. Maybe the bot sees something that's slightly different, but it gets you in the range, okay? And you can see how, uh, how they kind of, as the price kind of flattened out, the bands got a little closer, and then once it started to dump a little bit, it, it fattened out the bands. Um, so you can trade on it that way. Uh, I didn't have the other stuff set up yet, but we'll, we'll, go, we'll go there later. Um, I was going to show you like how the how the math works on, on the entry. Um, I probably still do it. Let's see. Okay. 
so in app settings so in this case uh, low BB and the default buy value is 15 so it's going to try to buy it 15 inward from the low BB line what does that mean I'll tell you the entire range of BB is right here it's this it's it's in between the two bands okay um, and it's a hundred percent so this is a hundred percent of the width this is a hundred percent of the width so you're telling it to to try to buy at 15 percent above the low BB line so 15% above the low BB line is bigger when the bands are bigger and it's skinnier when the bands are skinnier because it visually looking at this 15% between here is a smaller gap from the bottom than 15% is here from the bigger from the bigger wider gap. Um, so that's essentially it. If you're a high BB, it's the it, it starts at the top and comes down. So positive integers are inward. Think of that like that. If it's positive, it's in. So high BB positive is this way, low BB positive is this way. If it's negative, it's outside of the bands. You can you can do that too. If you want to buy, if you wanted to buy low BB below the band down here, it's a negative value. Okay. Um, it's, and obviously you can look. That's a perfectly valid thing to do. You can see that. Look at that pump there. Um, you know some of these ones that you you can buy here. Uh, pretty good buying opportunities. Now, a lot of times when you see those wicks like that, you're probably not getting those prices. Uh, it'd be nice, but a lot of times you, you know, if you're, if you're lucky, the bot will see some stuff there, but typically you're going to see stuff uh, inside of the candles. Um, and we'll go into more strategy about, you know, what you want to look at and how you want to set your stuff based on what strategy you're in, but we'll just kind of go over <clears throat> indicators right now. Okay, so on to the next one. All right, next up is simple moving average strategy. Uh, in short, an SMA is taking the closing price of every period or every, every candle, uh, a certain number, and then averaging them all together and drawing a line. So in this case, if your period was 300, that'd be a five minute candle period, uh, and there's 24 of them. So it's gonna take 24 candles in, in five minute chunks, and then average that price across. And then, you know, for your strategy, you do something based on where that line is. You either try to buy below it or above it. Uh, same kind of thing in here. There's your period setting, uh, and you can draw two lines. In Profit Trailer, there is, I believe, the uh, simple and the exponential. So the exponential is kind of like a simple moving average, except it's weighted it gives more weight in, in the calculation to the prices up front. Uh, the idea being uh, it's, more, it's trying to be more of a leading indicator than a lagging. Um, yeah, it's still lagging. You're still looking at stuff in the, in the past. But, uh, so yeah, exponential, just remember that, that. A lot of people like to use the MA because it's looking and caring more about what's happening recently than what happened towards the back end uh, of that spread. To draw a uh, simple moving average, here we're going to go back to indicators and we're going to look for moving and there's your moving average and EMA on here is moving average exponential not exponential moving average but it's the same thing so we'll click on moving average and we can go back in here and set our parameters um, in this case it's going it's going off of the candle size that's up here so you just tell it how long you want it if it's if it's 20 it's 20 in our config we had it at uh, five minute candles and 24 and 12. So we would come back here and we would say, okay, this is supposed to be 24, okay? And this is actually five minute candles. And we would not, what well, we'd want another one. So moving. Oh, I don't want a trial. So moving average. Oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, you went three, okay, well, whatever doesn't matter. I was going to draw another one. I'm cheap. I don't have a, I don't have a paid subscription to this. But in any case, uh, you could put two. I have EMAs already on here, so we'll just switch to those. Um, so you can, you can 
put two across each other and then look at the look at the difference. And we'll, we'll get into that a little more when we talk about uh, the spreads, the SMA spreads and the EMA spreads. So hopefully it helped you a little bit. Now you know what indicators are and how they how they look and what their function is, and more importantly, how to match those indicators to uh, to what's on your bot. All right, cool. On to the next one. All right, cool. So let's get on to the strategy side. Uh, there are quite a few strategies for buying in Profit Trailer. Uh, there's a couple for selling. We're gonna go through and list them all, and then we'll talk about each one individually and how they how they tie in. Uh, first thing, you know, in bold up here. Don't forget to check your indicators. These buy strategies look to the indicators file that we talked about before. These guys. So these set your parameters for what strategy you're gonna use. So sometimes I get questions and they say, well, should I lower my max cost or should I, should I change this? And I said, well, what's the rest of your stuff, right? Because these things all kinda, kinda interact. Um, so we've got low BB and high BB. And I think we've already kinda covered that a few times, but since I don't know where people are jumping in, we'll just do it now again. Uh, there are two lines in Bollinger Bands. So we'll come over here and we'll say we want the Bollinger Bands. And you've got a high and a low, and they're, the, the bands are drawn in reference to the SMA, which is your, your, your smooth moving average. The space in between the, the high and the low Bollinger Band, that's 100%. And if you're buying off of the high BB, and it's a positive integer, it, it's going to come this way. So if it's, you know, 50% here, you know, 40, 30, 10, 20, whatever. If it's negative, it's outside of the band. So if you wanted to buy above the high BB, you say high BB negative five, negative 10 as a percent, right? Uh, so same with the low, you know, boom, from, from zero to 50 and then, and then negative out. Uh, and he puts the math in there on how those are calculated, but uh, sometimes it just helps to show that on a chart and so you can kind of see what's, what's what. Loss, I never use loss. Um, might be worth a shot one day, but it essentially just looks at 24 hour pricing. And if it's dropped a certain amount in 24 hours, just buy it. Uh, you've got your EMA gain, your SMA gain. So the EMA gain uses two exponential moving average lines uh, as defined again in here. So it's gonna take these two in this period. So 300 seconds would be five minute candles. Uh, and this is at a 34 and 13. So if we were gonna plot that, we would do this. Moving average, there we go. So on EMA, remember, exponential. We'll just add two of those. And one was 13. I'm not gonna mess with the rest of them, rest of the stuff. And 34. That's gives you two lines. So the, the number that you're putting in is again, is a percent, but it's a percent below the lower of the two lines. That strategy doesn't care about what's fast and what's slow. It just cares about what's lowest. Uh, so in this case, it would try to buy somewhere below this guy. So if we even looked at this one here, um, get rid of that. So from you know this general area, you could hit that twice. This is the lowest line, right? And roughly. So roughly about. Well, that's way too low. <laughs> Never mind. Hold on. Let's do that again. Uh, yeah, something like that. So about about a percent. So if you had a, an EMA gain of negative one, you may have triggered this and probably came into profit, okay? Um, so that's how that one works. I believe trailing works on that too, so. Uh, SMA gain, exact same as EMA, except you use an SMA line to do it. So, you know, instead of these guys, it'd be a simple, moving average. So it's just going to be a, a percentage below just a single line. Um, we'll probably go into what those differences are, you know, maybe in a more in-depth video, but for now, just, I'm just kind of going through how these work. Uh, okay, so spreads. These are cool. Uh, spreads are a pretty popular one. Um, in fact, I kind of came up with this later when I was trying to explain to, <laughs> explain to Elroy what, what we were doing with the previous product. Um, and as I was looking at, looking at the chart, it was like, huh, you know, maybe this could work. Um, it's essentially the trading off of the spread of the difference between your two lines, your two fast, your, your fast and your slow. So if we go here, we'll go again. And we're gonna go 
moving average exponential twice. So you've got a fast and a slow. Let's let's color them different so we know easily which one's which. Uh, style. Make that red. A little fatter. Okay. So we've got a fast and a slow. So the fast is really kind of tracking that price pretty close, and the slow is a little you know a smooth a smooth line, still showing trend, but over a, over you know longer periods. So it, what it does is it, it does create a spread. So there's a there's a a percentage difference between the, this line and this line, and, and you're trying to trade on the on the difference. And what's cool with that type of spread is you can control how smooth that is. So like right now we're we're trailing really close, but what if I wanted to uh, basically play the averages a little more? I can come in here and I can say, well, I want it to be, I want it to be 12, you know, half of the. So the fast is half of my long, and you can see how it smooths out a little more. Well, that would also greatly change what percentage I should be using for my max cost entry. So uh, it's all about how you want to build it, how, how you want to look at the charts and how you want to attack them. But just realize that it really helps a lot to, as you're playing and tinkering, to come into the charts and uh, see visually what it's doing. Uh, trading is a lot more powerful than that. You can get into Pine and start doing your own scripting and stuff like that and looking for, for trend analysis. Um, but even just looking at a chart like this will put you, you, know, put you ahead of the game a little bit. Um, I, SMA spread, kind of same thing. It's two SMA lines instead of EMA lines, so I probably don't need to redraw that, but uh, same exact concept. Uh, and then we are going to get to the SMA cross. So the SMA cross, now so in, in, in the EMA spread, it doesn't care about what's happened. All it really is looking for is the value between these two. In the cross, it's actually looking for did it cross. So let me change this back to three. Okay. So here is a situation where the fast has crossed up over the slow, which usually indicates indicates like an uptrend. Um, it's not always a winning trend, but it <laughs> definitely means that um, your your fast momentum has overtaken your slow average. If that makes any sense. So if we look at the actual way this is written, you may cross. So the trailing does not work with the cross strategy. So remember that. You know, you're not going to trail. It's just going to it's going to look at this condition and then if the condition is met, it will try to buy. So it's looking at the the amount of cross candles, the buy value and the trailing buy. So if the fast EMA just crossed up the slow EMA in the last two candles, excluding the current candle. So if it's, uh, let's zoom in a little bit more. Okay, so in this case, here's our cross, and we got one, two, three candles. So if you're on this candle, it's going to say, okay, it did cross up in the last two. Well, actually, even this candle, right? If you, if you take this one out and look at these last two, it crossed up, maybe. Whatever, uh, but anyway, so it's looking for confirmation that it's up and, and the trend is there and it will attempt to buy. It is also looking at if the spread is also bigger than the all buy value. So not only do the candles have to, uh, ha the, not only does it have to have crossed in a certain amount of candles, but it has to be a certain amount of velocity above that um, and then buy. So again, that's kind of a, it's a different way to look at it. You're, you're, what you're really trying to do is confirm that you're in the beginning of a trend and not at a big spread somewhere further in the trend where it's maybe about to go down. So depending on how you look at it, maybe a, maybe a, 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 a cross is a better condition for you. Certainly something to play with. Um, we'll be doing testing on both. I haven't, I haven't even, I haven't had time. <laughs> I've been using the spread for so long, but um, the cross, you know, sounds like a pretty cool thing to play with. All right, so there's also some selling uh, selling strategies. There's only two right now. There's high BB and there's gain. So the high BB is pretty simple. Well, they're both pretty simple. Um, it says, it, sell it as soon as the current price goes above the high BB line you specified. Uh, there is also a protection for this, I'll explain. So it's gonna say, well, if you, if you got into here and you wanna sell at high BB zero, it's gonna sell right when the price starts to 
uh, pop out above that line. But you know, the savvy people amongst you might wonder, well, what if that's still not in profit if you consider exchange fees? Because just because the high BB line is hit doesn't necessarily mean you've made a ton of profit because the, the BB lines can get, can get skinnier. Well, there is a variable called all min profit, I believe. And it's not listed here, but it is in the wiki. We will go to pairs. And I think it's min profit. Yep. So all min profit. It says use this value to ensure you've reached a suitable profit level when using high BB as a sell strategy, not used with gain. So uh, just remember, one is probably a good level for that because um, exchanges can take, you know, a quarter of a percent or half percent on, you know, uh, on both sides of an exchange. So uh, just make sure that's set to a number that, that no matter what, you know, you'll you'll still end up in profit uh, when that when that condition is triggered. Uh, okay, and the last one is just plain old. Plain old gain. Um, so again, a lot of people use gain. It's just whatever. If, if, if the price is in a certain percentage of profit, start trailing and try to sell. Uh, so, so that's all the buy and sell strategies. Uh, we'll move on to the next section, and I'll see you in the next one. Oops, maybe.